Well, here we are in mid-February, and you would be forgiven if you thought this was a picture of uh, Norway or something, but actually it's New York. New York completely frozen in. The harbor is uh, frozen all the way across, and uh, it's cold. Today I think it was... Uh, it was about zero degrees Fahrenheit in the morning and hasn't got, hasn't got a heck of a lot warm. I've been here for in this marina for five years now and uh, I've never seen it frozen as, as much as it is right now. But anyway, we had a big problem because uh, although there are some ice eaters in the marina, there really aren't enough. And around most of the boats, it's completely frozen, including around the poor old blue moon. You can see just kind of sticking out there without her bow sprit. The blue, the blue bow there, right in the middle of the screen. Got the bow sprit home through place. And uh, she's in just about the worst spot. The ice is about oh, six inches thick. And that's just for the last couple of days <clears throat> just got really cold and just totally froze over it wasn't too bad a couple of days ago but now uh, it's just really bad so anyway uh, I've been cursing the marina for having an inadequate bubbler system but cursing wasn't doing any good so I decided to take matters into my own hands so here uh, she is poor thing completely icebound you can see a hole that I started chopping just to get an idea of. Uh, I thought I came down here actually with the idea, oh, I'll just you know chop it away a little bit. No way, it's like six inches thick. Couldn't even get through there. But I gave up really because I decided I would start chopping on the warmer side of the boat. Uh, but anyway, you can see the She's really frozen in. This has never happened before. You can walk in that ice. So here we are on the other side of the boat and um, see what I've been up to. So what I did was I chopped a hole in the ice laboriously with one of Helena's garden tools. You can see on the deck there. I'm sure she's not going to thank me for that, but it was an emergency, darling. Um, and right there you can see the ice here ready to be deployed. It's basically just a motor cage around it to keep the debris out and uh, fan and uh, it's rather valuable so I decided to put a chain on it just to make it a little more difficult for people to take uh, I'm not going to expect anybody to take it but just to deter them um, and uh, the couple ropes normally you're supposed to sling these between two two points to uh, kind of balance it out but uh, I just have one hole so uh, for the moment I'm just going to lower it down and then, and then later on uh, tomorrow maybe I'll come back and hopefully the ice will be gone and I'll be able to uh, deploy it in a little more strategic manner but right now I'm just going to lower it into this hole here and uh, see what happens all right and there it is plugged in. And you can see it's just gushing up out of that hole, spreading out all over the place. So, uh, of course, the water is much warmer. It's about four feet below the water right now. So, uh, I mean, below the ice. So, that water is you know, it's not freezing anyway. Uh, so, I expect that tomorrow morning. This whole area around here, and you can see the view for us, at least I'm hoping it will be. Okay, so here we are the next day, and you can see that that has made a tremendous amount of difference. As a matter of fact, it's helped my neighbor more than it's helped me. He's almost completely... <laughs> it's kind of ironic. <clears throat> yeah, he's kind of uh, completely uh, ice-free and... Uh, I'm still working on it. Um, so uh, today I kind of readjusted it a bit. Actually, I 
considered moving it onto the other side, but the ice was so thick I, I couldn't bash through it with the only tool that I have left. Uh, so I decided to just lower it. So what I did was I took my homemade lead line and measured the depth because I didn't want it to, the, the ice heater to be sitting on the ground or in the mud at low tide. So uh, right now it's about 15 foot deep in the slip uh, and there's about seven feet of tide left. So that gives me a good eight feet at low tide. <clears throat> so I put the uh, the ice eater at six feet down, which is two feet below the keel. And that should give me, that should keep it well off the mud even uh, at low, low tide. And I'm hoping that uh, some of the some of the warm water will get up on the other side of the of the boat, at least enough to uh, get her. Well, she is she is free at, at this point. She's floating in in water all around, but the ice on this side is still very thick. You can see I tried to dig a hole there, and I got down to about 10 inches, and I still didn't see any bottom. So I, actually, I gave up. Uh, but um, yeah, she's floating, and uh, you can see, I, I, I'm pretty sure that by tomorrow at least the dock will be free. And at that point, I think I might move the ice heater onto the dock. And uh, that'll kind of disperse the water on both sides evenly and uh, I think probably is the best thing, mainly because that's what I see everybody else doing. There's, there's an ice heater right there, a couple, and it's, it is keeping three three and a half slips open completely open and this one is freely the the, the, the really the, the ones on either side are fairly open as well that one is has another ice heater on the other side of it it's a cute little boat by the way um but anyway so i think if i have it on the dock and get all the ice out of here then um it, the ice heater will keep it clear See, it's snowing again. This is uh, what it does pretty much every day. We live in the Arctic. Yeah. So, um, anyway, getting there. At least she's not in the ice anymore, which is good. So, it's amazing how, how once the ice starts freezing, how, how fast it gets thicker. Well, I'm, I was really surprised. Anyway. Problem is mostly solved, just a matter of getting the rest of it out of there and then uh, keeping it out. Ah, so there we go, there we have it. And uh, maybe spring will come someday. I, I don't know, it's hard to imagine. Don't have a huge amount of accumulation, but it, it just never melts because uh, it's just still so darn cold. You can see people have been shoveling the snow off their ice. I mean, <laughs> off their ice. The snow off their boats. I've been trying to keep up with it as well. Actually, it's people are doing a pretty good job, most people. Uh, the problem is, is that gets, you know, that snow load gets very heavy after a while. And besides, probably not doing my paint job very much help, but I don't know. I've tried with the cover and without the cover, and Unless you have a really good cover, it's hardly worth it. Um, so anyway, that's the uh, update for today. And we'll check back in tomorrow and see how it goes. Okay, so here we are on the third day. And uh, you can see that the ice has completely defrosted the boat next to me. That doesn't seem fair. But uh, I've moved the uh, ice eater to the stern, between the, the stern and the dock, which is where most of the other ice eaters in the dock are, so I assume there's a good reason for that. You can see, maybe you can't, but let me see if I can zoom in here. Uh, you can see that the thing pushes it, you know, a current of water along the side of the boat. And I'm hoping by tomorrow this whole area will be completely ice free. Maybe not right up to the bow, but uh, we'll see. So 
So uh, we had another night of snow. Shuffled most of it off. I really got to build a cover next year. I've decided that's going to be one of my big projects. And uh, yeah, but uh, I think this problem is solved. All right, so here we are again, the uh, fourth day. And as I was hoping, the uh, ice is nice and clear now, except a uh, bit up by the bow there. But uh, there's quite a lot of ice to melt, and uh, it seems to be doing a good job of it. By tomorrow, it'll be uh, mostly gone. So, uh, the other side is completely clear all the way up to the bow. So. Much improved situation. And here it is on the other side. You can see it's right, even in front of the bow, there's plenty of, uh, of water. And it's clear. Probably up to the next boat. I don't, I don't know why. Why it, it's so much more effective over here. But now I've helped defrost the next guy. So, I should give me a medal here. But anyway, <clears throat> much better than it was, and uh, for the future, uh, this should solve the whole dock problem. So I'm glad I uh, invested in this little device. And uh, yeah, so I think that's, that's pretty much it for this little project. Gonna get out there and blow up those, uh, those fenders there, I can see. Supposed to get extremely cold tonight. It's cold again right now. It's absolutely freezing. I don't know what the temperature is, but uh, it's really cold. So I've got my gloves off to take this picture. So I'm going to cut this off and uh, pull it a wrap and get my gloves back on. Hope that spring is coming soon.